It's a very interesting observation that um, as an economist coming from China, but trained in the West, I'm seeing two very different economic models in play and quite successful in their own way. One is the uh, free market liberal economics uh, practiced by uh, people in the US and then a very strong political economy or state um, economics practiced in China. And of course I'm trained uh, in the US at Harvard. So um, as an economist, uh, everything I've known about economics, uh, I've studied, I've learned in the US. Um, I think we really need to have a rethink about what is conventional economic theory, what is the conventional economic model, whether there's really just only one economic model based on um, you know, broadly speaking, the invisible hands uh, theory, or whether that might, there might be some alternative that could be in certain contexts even more effective and better than um, kind of uh, free uh, market economies. And sometimes it could perform worse. And uh, China is a very good example, I think, um, that illustrates that the role of the state can be uh, effective uh, at times. And it does propel a very different political economy model uh, where politics play a very central role. Now, uh, usually in Western economics, we tend to think uh, small government is good, less state is better than more state. Uh, and there's a strong bias against uh, government actions, which is interpreted as government interventions. And then the massive and wieldy slumbering state is suppressing the private sector, etc. That tends to to feature very prominently in, in the narrative in the West. Um, but I would be cautious as to making such kind of, um, you know, very clear uh, and conclusive um, kind of arguments uh, in, that, in, that, in that spirit, because if we look at China, it does have a very, very highly effective political economy model where the state plays a very central role. But within China, there's not just one model, but several models. And some models work extremely well, even better than market economies and capitalism as you understand it. And some model exactly falls into the trap of what Westerners call the corrupt extractive state, right? So, so I think China is fascinating because it showcases that how the state intervenes, the extent of state intervention and um, you know, under what conditions it intervenes really matters for the outcome. It is not to say that state participation is either good or really bad. No, it's not black and white. And China presents that, the evidence for that. You know, to give you an example, Shenzhen is a Southern city in China and it's the home to the most innovative technology companies including Tencent, um, which owns WeChat. Uh, we now all, all know WeChat and Huawei. Um, this city has uh, a government or a local government that is close to the private uh, companies, but also very light or very clean. So it facilitates private company growth by giving them lots of land, free land, uh, lots of cash and projects and procurement to help them do investment, to help coordinate supply chains, everything you can think of to help these companies grow faster and overcome lots of administrative barriers, but yet at the same time, it is relatively clean in terms of not being overly oppressive or corrupt. And what's the verdict? Um, uh, the outcome is that the GDP of this city grew more than 12,000 times uh, between, 17, uh, uh, between 40 years ago and now, and has far surpassed its neighboring cities um, such as Guangzhou and Zhuhai. Uh, but we can give you also many other examples further north in China, where the state is uh, uh, close but not clean, or the state is neither clean nor close, and that becomes the extractive state and a highly corrupt uh, state. 
And that's uh, what people would refer to as a very failed state model. But this shows that how it's done really matters. So can we just think about capitalism, free market economy as the only way to go? No, because um, what Shenzhen and uh, places in Jiangsu and Zhejiang, which is close to Shanghai have shown, this model can be highly efficacious. How do you bring a city from a fishing village into a world superpower in manufacturing technology within such a short a period of time. If you actually just wait a capitalism to um, build on its own, markets to slowly build, financial markets to mature, this will take a long time. It took the West 100 years or more to build that. China, it did it in a third of that time because there's an active state coordinating all these resources, overcoming these frictions, um, stepping in when these institutions are immature uh, and playing a very, very active role. But again, it depends on how. So I think China's case um, is, a good, um, is a good example where we should question you know, whether there's only one economic theory uh, or one basic economic theory at play, or we should expand um, uh, these possibilities.